125,600 minutes is exactly how long you'll want to spend in this museum. This place is awesome. I'm in New York City and today we're visiting a museum that pays tribute to the biggest and brightest shows on Broadway. So we're about to head in, so come on, let's go. So right now I am here with Julie, the co-founder of this museum. How are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you so much. So for all of the Broadway lovers who haven't had the chance to come here yet, what can they expect? Um, so the Museum of Broadway, we go through the entire history of Broadway, so you're actually going to walk through it, um, starting in 1732 all the way through to present day, and there are traditional timeline walls that you'll see that tell the story of different plays, musicals, groundbreaking moments that have happened in our history, and then you'll come to an exhibit which is dedicated to some of the shows that have really transformed the landscape, pushed us forward, changed the form, brought in new audiences. Each one is designed by a different scenic designer or an artist. In and so it's basically a combination of like artifacts, there's costumes and set models and all sorts of different um, items, but then it's shown in a way that's experiential. So when you get to Oklahoma on the timeline, you're walking through a cornfield. And when you're in West Side Story, you're in Doc's Drug Store and you can learn the choreography because it's so iconic. And we had a lot of fun like playing with it and really like trying to have the history come to life. It's a really fun museum. Like it was really interesting to walk through all of the set pieces. So I was wondering, do you have a favorite like room or section of the museum? Uh, I can't have favorites because <laughs> when, when you make the Museum of Broadway, you have to be very Switzerland. But it does continue to change. We bring in new art items and artifacts. And then after you go through the entire museum, um, through the timeline, you actually knock on a stage door. You go backstage and you get to learn how Broadway shows are made. Most people have absolutely no idea. So they get to see, you know, all these different jobs. They get to learn about like being a stage manager or, you know, the collaboration process that everything starts with a blank page. So. It really brings it to life, hopefully, and helps to inspire the next generation. Yeah, and there's there's so much that goes into making a Broadway musical, and I think that that's really great that you're trying to show all these opportunities to future generations. Yeah, I feel like it's really important. You know, we have to learn from our past to be able to build our present and our right. future, so it can be you know more equitable and diverse and inclusive. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So when you're on the timeline of Broadway, when you get to present day, and then you knock on a stage door and go backstage, so there's a lot of actors that you'll end up seeing on the wall that you know probably from film and TV, um, but you had no idea they actually got their start on Broadway. It's throughout the whole timeline, but I think there will be some recognizable ones around there. You know, the new Wicked movie is coming out, um, so people may not know, but Ariana Grande, she made her Broadway debut in 13, so you can find her on the wall, things Ooh. like that. So there's lots of fun, um, or you can see it the other way around. So, you know, Daniel Radcliffe, obviously everyone knows him from Harry <laughs> Potter, but he's been in a bunch of different Broadway shows and we actually have his costume on display upstairs from How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. <laughs> so lots of fun connections to make. You can see a lot of really like famous movie stars of today in their early Broadway debut. So lots of fun things to discover as you're reading all the captions and looking at everything throughout. So if people are interested in visiting this lovely museum, uh, where can we find all the information? So online would be the best. It's themuseumofbroadway.com. On social, it's at Museum of Broadway. We have our entire schedule on there, how to visit, what to do. You can also get your tickets at the museum, too. You can show up and buy them that day. And we've actually just introduced this new program um, called Curtain Call. It's about a Broadway happy hour. So for the last hour, basically, of admission from at starting at 4 o'clock, you can get a discount. Ooh! Yeah! <laughs> pro, pro tip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And now we are checking out the timeline of Broadway. Can you tell us a little bit about this room? Absolutely. This is the Ziegfeld Follies room. Just behind us over here, we have costumes that are original to the Ziegfeld Follies. They're just over 100 years old now, which is really, really incredible. They're in an amazing state. Um, the Ziegfeld Follies ran between 1907 through 1925. Each year, there was a different review. There were two additional reviews in 1927 and again in 1931. That costumes look like they're in such good shape, honestly. I would never have guessed that they're 100 years old. <laughs> no, absolutely. They're just 
just preserved just for us to have here. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this photo op experience. This looks like what a dressing room would have looked like during the Ziegfeld Follies. So you can sit, get ready, as if you were about to go on stage like a real Ziegfeld Follies chorus girl. Well, I guess we're in Oklahoma now. If you're a fan of West Side Story, they've got an original Jets jacket right here. What I'm noticing is that there are quite a few great photo ops here. You can take photos on actual set pieces or authentic recreations. And if you're a Broadway fan, that is a big deal because you can't ever get on stage. Well, hello Dolly. This is from Hello Dolly. Life is a cabaret, my friend. Life is a cabaret. So Emily, can you tell us a little bit about the area we're in right now? Yeah, so this is Cabaret. It was created in 1966, the show was. It's a really cool show based in World War II, kind of the escapism uh, with the underground clubs and stuff like that. Let the sun shine in because it is the coming of the age of Aquarius. That's right, we're in the hair room. Are you celebrating your birthday? There's no better place to come than the Museum of Broadway. We're easing down the road to the 70s. Day or night, the sun is always shining in this museum. Definitely gonna walk away with a lot of memories from this museum. The Phantom of the Opera is here at the Museum of Broadway. If you're a Disney fan, you're gonna find a lot of Broadway treasures here. Can you feel the love tonight? Well, I certainly can. Look, it's Lion King. Here's an Elsa wig and crown from Frozen. We are back here with Emily, so everybody's pretty hyped for the new Wicked movie, but let's not forget the roots of where it came from, Broadway, so can you tell us a little bit about this area? For sure, so this is our Wicked area. We originally thought we were getting a bubble dress, and then they brought this. It's a full diorama of the Gershwin Theater with the full orchestra pit, backstage, rehearsal spaces, down to the costume area. It's really cool how it's a perfect scale of the Gershwin Theater. There's so much detail that was put into this. <laughs> it's crazy. Even like the little pictures from people's uh, dressing room mirrors are perfectly scaled down. It's so crazy. So how was this made? From my understanding, it was one of the stagehands COVID projects that he started and it just kind of spiraled from there. And we just got so lucky to be able to get it here. So how often are these pieces switched out? It depends on the piece. So like Milky White, the cow that we have coming up, she is the Milky White from the Into the Woods revival that just happened, and we got her as soon as the tour was done. We actually had a couple new items entered in two days ago. We have a dress from Gigi worn by Vanessa Hudgens, worn by her and Gigi, and then we also have a new outfit from uh, Almost Famous. So I see a signature on these boots. Uh, who do they want to? Yeah, these are signed by Lynn Manuel Miranda. Uh, we got them after Hamilton, he came in and he signed them for us. <laughs> if you love Beetlejuice, it's always showtime here at the Broadway Museum. Okay, now we're backstage. So this is the view that you would get standing on stage in front of some other Broadway theaters. I wonder what this must feel like when the audience is completely full. From on stage to backstage, they've left no aspect of production out. This really is an immersive experience. If you love Broadway, you have to come check this out. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, good night from the Museum of Broadway. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to check out some of the other videos from my fellow kids, first reporters and reviewers. From the Museum of Broadway in New York City, I'm Kat. We'll see you next time, maybe on the big stage. Thanks for watching.